Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In part four of our month of Miike special, I'll be going over Takashi Miike's most infamous film, the 1999 Japanese horror thriller film, Audition. The film tells the story of a man looking for love once more seven years after the death of his late wife. Instead of downloading Bumble just like the rest of us, he and his friends set up an audition for a movie role to find him the perfect match. Audition is Takashi Miike's most well-known film and is infamously remembered for one very disturbing scene. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore Audition and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with one of the saddest intros to a movie I've ever seen. We meet our main character, Shigeharu Aoyama, sitting next to his dying wife, Yoko, in the hospital. She passes away right in front of him and their young son, Shigehiko, who brought his mother a get well soon gift he made. <laughs> This intro hits you right in the feels and establishes the emotional weight felt by Shigeharu throughout the film. It just isn't fair. Seven years later, Shigeharu and his son are out fishing, something he will also do later, just not for fish. Shigeharu now lives alone with his son and their dog, Gangu. During dinner, his son says that he's been looking worn out lately and suggests that he get remarried. Shigeharu has a conversation with a co-worker who says that everyone in Japan is lonely. Loneliness and grief are the film's most obvious themes and the driving motivation for the actions of our characters. His co-worker, who has an obvious thing for him, says that she's going to get married soon. He doesn't really seem to care, which seemingly hurts her. He meets with his friend and movie producer Yoshikawa. He tells him that he wants to remarry and describes his ideal type. He is looking for a mature woman with a career and accomplishments. He wants to take his time to get to know someone as he can't afford to make any mistakes at his age. Yoshikawa says that there is a way for him to meet many women until he finds the perfect one. Audition. He comes up with the idea of setting up an audition to cast a female lead in a new movie. During the process, Shigeharu can screen the women he likes and find a potential soulmate. Hearing them talk about their plan while walking into that room made me think we were watching the creation of the casting couch. They play an ad for the audition over the radio called Tomorrow's Heroine. <laughs> He goes through the applications in what seems to be the earliest instance of an online dating app. While he goes through the hundreds of potential matches, he looks over at a photo of his late wife on his desk. He obviously feels guilty about what he's doing and turns her photo around. Yoshikawa tells him not just to look at the photos, but to read the personal essays that the women wrote. He spills some coffee on an application which brings his attention to it. I call that coffee with a side of destiny, otherwise known as a convenient plot device. The application is of a woman named Asami Yamazaki. He reads her essay and sees that she had 12 years of classical ballet training. His son invites a girl over to the house, and the two seem to share a passion for dinosaurs. Shigehiko loved dinosaurs ever since he was a boy, as shown when he made his mother a dinosaur-themed gift before her death. The day of the audition has arrived, and Shigeharu has narrowed the list down to 30 women. They interview several women, but he seems mostly interested in Asami. The audition itself is pretty comical and almost feels like we're watching a rom-com. <laughs> This can be pretty deceiving for those who have never seen the film and aren't familiar with Takashi Miike's work. Asami's turn has finally arrived. She says that she is not part of an agency, but that the director of a record company named Mr. Shibata looks after her personally. She also works at her friend's bar three times a week. Shigeharu asks her a question about ballet and didn't question any of the other applicants, showing that he already made his choice prior to the audition. He tells her that he is impressed by what she wrote in the essay. He goes on a long long-winded spiel about how he relates to what she wrote, specifically regarding the acceptance of death. Shigeharu already seems in love, but Yoshikawa says that she makes him nervous. He can't explain why, but feels that there is something wrong with her. That night, Shigeharu calls Asami and invites her to talk in person. She accepts, and he seems more excited than I was when I got my first and only match on Bumble. He 
he receives a call from Yoshikawa who says that the Mr. Shibata Asami spoke about disappeared 18 months ago. Shigeharu and Asami go out on a lunch date and he asks her about Mr. Shibata. She admits to lying about having an agent because she heard it was better to pretend to know someone in the industry. He ignores the red flag and they proceed to have a nice lunch together. Asami asks him if they can go on another date. She says she doesn't mind when or where they meet or even if they just talk over the phone. Shigeharu has fallen in love and tells Yoshikawa that he isn't interested in any other girl. His friend warns him of the danger of falling in love too quickly. He reminds Shigeharu that he was the one who wanted to take his time to get to know her. Shigeharu believes that she is perfect, but Yoshikawa still doesn't feel good about her. He believes that Asami was way too easy and that they don't know anything about her. He tells Shigeharu not to call her back too soon and to play it cool. As Shigeharu fights off the urge to call Asami, we see her sitting alone in her apartment. She is sitting in complete silence in front of a black phone waiting for him to call her. There is a large potato sack next to the phone and this entire scenery seems odd and unnerving. While he sleeps, Shigeharu has a dream about his late wife Yoko. It's almost as if she is watching him from the other side. 40 minutes in and this is our first real creepy sequence. We get another awkward scene between Shigeharu and his co-worker that has a crush on him. He sits in his office twiddling his thumbs and tries his best not to dial Asami's digits. Asami is still sitting in silence in the exact same spot. Her head is tilted down and her hair is covering her face. He picks up the phone but fights off the urge to give her a call. This lasts for an entire two minutes before he caves in and calls her. When the phone finally rings, Asami smiles deviously and lifts her head. In a jump scare that caught me completely off guard, the sack in her living room suddenly moves. The entirety of this scene is horror brilliance. There was already something super unnerving about Asami sitting in silence in that one spot of her apartment. It sent chills down my spine the moment the phone rang and she cracked that evil smile. The cherry on top was that sack jump scare that I was not expecting. She answers the phone and admits she thought he would never call her. She laughs and says that she can't stop smiling because she thought she'd never see him again. He asks if he can visit her at work but she gives him the excuse that the owner is too nosy. This also sounds odd because she previously referred to the owner as her friend. She swears she would never lie to him, although that's the very first thing she did during the audition. To be fair, the entire foundation of this relationship is built on Shigeharu's lies. He and his friend set up a fake audition for the main goal of finding him a wife. Although I sympathize with his character and what he's been through, it's a pretty sleazy and manipulative thing to do. They have a couple of seemingly nice dates where she tells him about her family and her past. He tells her that the film didn't get enough backing and may never be made. She says that she's been alone all her life and has never had anyone to talk to. She feels that Shigeharu understands and accepts her and finds comfort in him. On the taxi ride home, they talk about going to dinner again and he says that he's going to give her a ring. I understand my man hasn't been in the game for a while, but that's usually something you want to surprise a woman with. She asks to be dropped off somewhere along the street and literally just stands there as he drives away. We get another eerie shot of the sack inside her apartment to remind us that there is definitely something wrong with her. Shigehiko knows that his dad has a girlfriend now because of the way he's been acting. He tells his son that he plans on proposing to Asami over an upcoming weekend getaway. Three dates and several red flags is more than enough for Shigeharu to decide he wants to spend the rest of his life with this woman. Shigehiko is very supportive of his father as the two seem to have a great loving relationship. The two lovebirds go on a weekend trip to the beach. He asks Asami what she wants to do before dinner and she proceeds to take off all her clothes. Oh, I'm dizzy. 
It takes five whole minutes for his brain to process what he's seeing before he walks over to her. She wants him to take a look at her body and shows two large scars on her right leg. She says she accidentally burned herself when she was young. She asks him to love her and only her and he says that he will. He takes off his clothes and the two share a kiss before we are cheated out of a sex scene. He wakes up alone in bed to a phone call telling him that Asami has left. She is no longer answering her phone and he has no other way to contact her. He asks Yoshikawa if he can track down her address but he tells Shigeharu to forget about her. This triggers him and he plans on tracking her down himself. <laughs> He looks at her application and locates her old ballet studio. The old studio looks run down and is all boarded up. He hears a piano being played inside and takes that as an invitation to come in. Come in, come in, come in. Inside, he meets Asami's old creepy ballet teacher, Mr. Shimada. He clearly knows that there is something wrong with Asami and we see that he contributed to that. We see flashbacks of Asami as a child attending ballet class and being abused by Mr. Shimada. The old pervert burned her with jaw sticks, causing her scars and who knows what other atrocious things he did to her. He is most likely the reason that she stopped pursuing ballet. The old man gets up from his wheelchair and is sporting some questionable kicks. <laughs> Shigeharu visits the bar Asami supposedly works at called the Stonefish. This reveals yet another lie as he is told by a man whom we'll call Convenient Timing Information Guy that the place closed over a year ago. He says that the owner was murdered and chopped up into pieces over her lover. Even more stonefishy is that the owner's boyfriend was a music director. He says that when the police collected the body parts, there were three extra fingers, an ear, and a tongue that didn't belong to anyone. Shigeharu envisions the chopped up tongue flopping around and gives one of the funniest reactions I've ever seen. <laughs> As the housekeeper leaves the house, we get a first-person perspective of someone entering it. The unknown person goes upstairs and sees the picture of Yoko. The unknown person goes back downstairs and heads straight for the alcohol. Shigehiko leaves his dad a message saying he's staying over with a friend and won't come home. Shigeharu comes home and pours himself a glass of cognac and doesn't notice the intruder closing a door. He sits in silence for a bit before feeling a little woozy. His body starts to lock up and he falls straight back into a flashback of going on a date with Asami. However, this flashback plays more like a dream sequence as the events are different than what actually took place. She tells him that her parents divorced when she was young and that she went to live with her uncle and his abusive wife. She talks about her abusive past and says that ballet is what calmed and saved her. The flashback turns into an obvious dream when Shigeharu sees his late wife and a younger version of his son sitting at another table. He introduces Asami to Yoko and gets a negative reaction. He and Asami are now inside of her apartment and she says that she wants him. She unbuckles his pants and gives him a Brazilian jiu-jitsu without the jitsu. She then turns into his co-worker and it's revealed that the two slept together once before. The co-worker thought it would lead to somewhere which would explain her previous behavior towards him. She then turns into his son's girlfriend. He pushes her away and trips on the large mysterious sack. Ah! Ah! The sack contains a strange man inside with no tongue, a missing ear, three missing fingers, and no feet. This is Mr. Shibata, the music director that she initially referenced during the audition. He was the lover of the bar owner and Asami possibly fell in love with him at some point. She murdered the bar owner, mutilated Mr. Shibata, and has kept him alive all this time. It's never revealed how Shigeharu can see all these things in his dream without having seen them in real life. To make an already disturbing scene more disturbing, Asami throws up into a bowl and feeds it to him. <laughs> Mr. Shimada appears holding jaw sticks and begs Asami to dance for him or she'll get punished. Adult Asami lifts up her skirt and allows him to burn her with the incense. Mr. Shimada is now back inside of his dance studio playing the piano. Asami appears behind him and wraps a wire around his neck. With a look of pleasure on her face, she says that the wire can easily cut through bone. The dream sequence gets increasingly strange and even the bartender from the beginning gets to shine. What is your
Asami decapitates Mr. Shimada and Shigeharu wakes back up on the floor of his house. Asami paralyzed him by slipping drugs into his drink before he came home. He sees Asami in a black leather apron and gloves that inspired the look of the deranged torturers in Hostel. We see Gangu dead on the floor, tragically murdered. We then get the film's most infamous shot. Asami holds up a syringe and turns to tell him that he is paralyzed. This is an iconic and terrifying shot, especially knowing what's about to happen. She says that he can't move but his nerves are still alive and more sensitive to pain. She sticks the needle in his tongue and we only see his reaction to it, which is scary enough. Asami reveals that she knew the audition was fake and that she and the other girls were being manipulated for his benefit. She cuts off his shirt and inserts several needles into his body. She seems to be an expert in the art of torture and looks like she is loving every minute of it. She then inserts the needles underneath his eyes. She threatens to hurt Shigehiko and he tells her to leave him alone. This proves to her that he loves his son and that she is not the only love in his life. She then says that all men are liars and are all the same. She then takes out her signature wire in an equally infamous shot. <laughs> At this point, it becomes clear that she murdered the bar owner and disfigured Mr. Shibata using the same wire. She even possibly chopped off both Mr. Shimada's feet as revenge for abusing her as a child. She proceeds to slice off his left foot and the enjoyment she gets from doing it is truly disturbing to see. She tosses his foot against the window and starts slicing off the other. This is the infamous torture scene that Audition is known for. The violent nature of the scene was very extreme for its time. Most will agree that the disturbing factor is heightened due to how tame the rest of the film is compared to it. She is interrupted by Shigehiko who comes home unexpectedly. She rushes to her bag and grabs a pepper spray. Shigehiko sees the disturbing side of his tortured father and has an odd reaction to it. He just stands there emotionless and doesn't do anything. I'm surprised he didn't just go back up to his room and start watching Jurassic Park. Asami rushes behind him and Shigeharu suddenly wakes up in bed next to her. She says that she accepts his proposal and the look on his face seems like he wants to take that shit back. This is showing us what Shigeharu wished would have taken place after they slept together. He wanted to propose to Asami and live happily ever after. That could never have happened as the foundation of the relationship was flawed from the very beginning. He then ignored all of Asami's red flags and dismissed his friend's concerns for his well-being. Asami unmenacingly chases Shigehiko around with the shortest ranged pepper spray I've ever seen. She chases him up the stairs and makes the same fatal mistake that Anakin did in Revenge of the Sith. Shigehiko kicks her off and we get about three separate shots of Asami flying off the stairs. He looks down and sees Asami laying on the ground with a broken neck. Shigehiko rushes down to check on his father and calls the police. Shigeharu looks at the dying Asami and realizes that he should have just put her application in the left pile. In her dying breath, she repeats the words she told him on a previous date about waiting for his phone call and how happy he made her. In the film's final scene, we see a young Asami wrapping her feet for ballet practice as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Audition. My friends, this was the first Takashi Miike film I was ever exposed to and has a reputation of being one of the most disturbing films ever made. The film is a tragic look at grief and loneliness and the things that people will resort to in order to cope. I really enjoy this film, its story and characters. It doesn't feel like a horror film for most of its runtime, which makes its highly disturbing third act all the more effective. However, even the third act is simply disturbing rather than scary, earning Audition a not-so-scary scare score of 39%. It's a great horror film, but viewers should be able to sit comfortably through most of its runtime until the torture scene at the end. The scariest scene in the film is when Asami is sitting alone in her apartment waiting for Shigeharu's phone call. The moment the phone rings, she gives off one of the most devious and creepy smiles I have ever seen on screen. Top that off with the unexpected potato sack jump scare and you've got yourself a truly brilliant scare scene. But, as always, I hope you all enjoy the video. 
Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.